Edward Hamilton Westrow Hulse was born on August 31, 1889, in Westminster, England. Hulse was the son of Sir Edward Henry Hulse, 6th Baronet, and Edith Maud Levy Lawson Hulse, daughter of Sir Edward Levy Lawson, 1st Baron of Burham. When Hulse was only 13, his father committed suicide, passing down the title of Baronet to Hulse, now Sir Edward Hamilton Westrow Hulse, 7th Baronet. Hulse was educated at Eden College and at Balliol College at Oxford, where he completed his degree in history in 1912. After a period of training with the Coldstream Guards, Hulse was commissioned into the 1st Battalion Scots Guard on March 8, 1913. On July 28, 1914, Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia, setting off World War I. In August of the same year, the 1st Infantry Division was sent to Mons, a battle in World War I, which was a victory for the Central Powers. The 1st Infantry Division was made up of three brigades, which consisted of 22 battalions, three machine gun companies, and three motor batteries. In November of 1914, Hulse was reassigned to the Scots 2nd Battalion in the 20th Brigade, which was part of the 7th Infantry Division. December was a hard month for many of the men in the trenches. With the constant raining, there were mudslides, burying many of the men in both sides, sometimes suffocating and killing them. When it wasn't raining, it was snowing, and with the below freezing temperatures, the mud would turn into ice. The hardest part is the approaching Christmas. In a letter to Hulse's mom, he noted, Germans or no Germans, water and mud or no water and mud, we are going to have a hell of a bust, including plum puddings for the whole battalion. He is talking about a feast. What he doesn't know is what lies ahead. On the 25th of December, he states in a letter to his mother, that his men were in the usual positions at 6.30, and noticed very little shooting. At 8, he noted that there was no shooting at all, except for a few shots on their left, which came from the 2nd Battalion Border Regiment. And finally, at 8.30, he explained how he looked out of the trenches and noticed four unarmed German soldiers, who were at this point 350 to 400 yards from their trench. Hulse ordered some of his men to get out of the trench and ordered the men back to at least to the halfway line. With his men not knowing what was going on and not reacting, Hulse climbed out of the trench alone and unarmed and forced the four Germans, who were now at about three-fourths of the way and almost to the barbed wire, back. The four Germans consisted of three privates and a stretcher bearer. One of them started off by wishing them a happy Christmas. One of the men were British, coming from Suffolk, when he, where he left his family to fight for the Germans. Later that day, more men from both sides climbed out of the trench where they were talking to each other, playing football, and some even cleaned up their trenches in the moment of ceasefire. The men from both sides even shared food and desserts. This famous event was called the Christmas Truce of World War I. Hulse was later promoted from the rank of lieutenant to captain. Hulse went on fighting for the British Army in World War I until March 12, 1915. On that day... At the Battle of Neuve Chapelle, Hulse got news of his commanding officer injured and unable to move while in the middle of no man's land. Without even thinking, Hulse climbed out of the trench and rushed to save him. In an attempt of saving Major George Painter, Hulse was shot and killed. Painter later wrote a letter to Hulse's mother, notifying of her son's death. The letter said, Dear Lady Hulse, he was a grand fellow, that son of yours. I can only realize a bit by my own feelings, how awful his loss must be to you. He was with me, trying to help me when he was hit. There was no finer soldier in the battalion, and his men would do anything for him. Forgive this scholar. Wish that you could write more. Yours sincerely, George Painter. On March 11, 1916, 350 days after Hulse's death, the Bishop of Salisbury dedicated a plaque recording his death in Salisbury Cathedral.